everybody. Sorry I'm running late. The reason is, is I just started this live. <laughs> just, it became an idea in my head like 10 minutes ago because you guys have been wanting me to do some cooking with you. And I was gonna make some stuff either for dinner or tomorrow. So I can talk a little bit about how I'm doing that too, or why I'm thinking of things that way. Because um, I know you guys know that I've been doing the McDougal diet, not the maximum weight loss, but the regular one. And if you guys have some questions about that, let me know. I see a few of you are on now. Thank you for waiting for me. We're still gonna gather ingredients as I'm cooking. You are literally cooking dinner with me. <laughs> I'm going to do, oh. <laughs> And Max, Max says, don't forget me. If we get a delivery, I'll have to disappear for a minute and corral him. He's very anxious for delivery. So today here is like this miraculous day. It's only getting up to 78. I have the house open. It's pretty humid, so I might get a little pink in the cheeks. But the good thing is, um, hey, Dianas. I'm from Phoenix. Oh, it's way hotter where you are. So I'm sorry. The past two days haven't been so bad. And like, so I have this camera that I use as this angle. You can see some of Fergus's toys, but you can see my little herb garden out there. And finally, I have the house open. Um, but what I thought I was going to make is Kung Pao. We're going to make some substitutes because I don't have everything. So I had already put that, and I, I'm gonna show you what I do when I don't have everything, because it happens, life is life. So Kung Pao has water chestnuts, which I don't have, but I have bamboo shoots. So I, I could decide to not call this Kung Pao and just call it kind, it can't really be a stir fry since I'm making it in the, um, the slow cooker, <laughs> but we can work with that. Oh, hey, Julia, it's awesome to see you. And let's see, Mary Lee, Patrick. Oh, I'm glad you enjoyed that. Doctor, it was such a pleasure to be on with Dr. McDougall and he's so generous with his time and answering questions. And Apple's here. Apple, you've changed your um, picture. Um, ah. That is a great question. I am using the revised vegan slow cooker. So I think these two recipes are also in the original one. Let me get, I'll grab a copy real quick to show you. So <laughs> you'll see my notes all over it because these are all the things I changed for the revised edition. There are a couple of recipes that are new and a, just very few that got taken out. So this is the original vegan slow cooker book. And the pictures just aren't as nice. The paper isn't as nice. But if you have it, you're good to go. And I'm pr also, I have a link down below or around or somewhere. Because the Kung Pao recipe is on HealthySlowCooking.com. Oh, you, d you didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> Apple says, where did my picture go? I'm like, I know. Oh, hi, Sky Warrior and Daria. It is awesome to see everybody here. So basically what I thought it would be kind of cool to show you is literally how I cook when it's not a class, right? When I'm not like, ooh, everything's prepared and everything's over here. So literally I posted that I was gonna go live. I looked in my pantry, no water chestnuts. We can do, do with that. You know, I, chop, I told you I was going to chop up all those mushrooms from my Costco call, haul, and here are some of them I'm pulling out of the freezer for this dish. If I wanted to use fresh onions, I could have gotten some of those from the freezer too. Um, oh, Mary Lee may be in September in Sacramento with Chef AJ. That's awesome. Um, and so Cheryl and I are going to be at that event. And we're kind of excited. We're, we're not, we're just hanging out. We're part of the audience. But Chef AJ being the generous soul that she is 
at, like the moment we graduated after our very last live of the McDougal 12 day program, she sent us a thing saying, I'm gifting you this for your graduation. So, which was so kind of her. And she sent me some towels. I can move now. There is, there's a lower level curse word. I won't show you both towels because there's a higher level curse word. But if you can read it, that's one of the things. If you can't, then I will save you from the cursing now. But it was adorable. Um, oh, Caroline, that's awesome that you saw the video of Chef AJ. So if, if those of you are going, what are these people talking about? So I have a monthly slot on Chef AJ's show the first Wednesday of every month. And so since we did the McDougal program, I'm like, do you want me to talk about the McDougal program or do a recipe? And then she's like, we'll get Dr. McDougal and Mary and we'll do this whole thing. And Cheryl was on and Cheryl was very nervous because she doesn't like to be on camera. But of course, it was all of you guys. So she felt much better. Um, hi, Ril. It's good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. I know I haven't been live as much. I also have I'm working now on trying to catch up because I feel like I'm three weeks behind some from doing the McDougal program. And then just trying to get into a, a new routine. And so part of our new eating routine is to always have rice cooked up. So I cooked up four cups of brown rice, which sounds like a lot, but we can have it as a snack. There's beans in there. So if we want to put beans on rice or make little tacos, every time I make something, so I had um, people over for dinner on Sunday and I made a taco bar. So I made, I sauteed mushrooms and tofu and I think some red bell pepper with a little bit of, I had taken ancho chilies, taken the seeds and stems out, reconstituted them in some water and pureed them. I think I put a, a dash of salt and some lime juice in there and I just used that paste. So they were very delicious and super easy. So I already had the paste, already had all these other things. Um, and then I made this casserole. I was gonna make enchiladas. And, and Julia, maybe you have some tips for me because I, or maybe it's the tortillas we get here are not super fresh. I do have a couple of Hispanic markets I can go to to get fresh tortillas, but the steaming them and oftentimes they crack. So I made like a little casserole. I was like, I'm going lazy, I'm already tired. And I just put a layer of corn tortillas and I cut some to make it like fill in the holes. And then I had some left, <coughs> leftover potatoes <coughs> and kale. I sauteed a bunch of kale, put the leftover potatoes. I think I put in some nutritional yeast and a little chili powder more tortillas and oh, under the tortillas on the bottom and on the top, I used some tomatillo salsa. So it just cooked up like a casserole. And now I have that in there at like portioned up with some beans. I have, um, I made two kinds of beans. I made some with um, a non-alcoholic beer that were really good. And I portioned those up with some rice so that literally for lunches, I can open there and I have basically my own ready meals. And that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, and Carlina saying, she mentioned that um, I worked out a compliant cream cheese recipe using Okara. And so you made it. So I would love it if you would share it with us in the comments, if not, or if you have a link, if you have it up, if you're a blogger, I'd love to share that link with people. So anybody always can email me at kathyhester at gmail.com if you have questions, if you wanna share something with me. Um, oh, and Darren is here in a live, yay. Oh, and Karen saw the replays. Watch out, I think Cheryl's gonna be a co-host. Cheryl in her head thinks that she's shy and uncomfortable on video, but she's not. And even when we go places, she's like, I don't know, I'm feeling shy. And then she's the one who makes friends in the whole room. Everybody loves Cheryl, because she's so nice. Oh, and Kitty Mama calls that enchilada lasagna, and I've heard that too. But I thought, at first I was like, I wonder if this is gonna work, but 
I don't give you guys things that don't work, but I'll try anything. And sometimes things, you know, if it's like, well, it's not quite so flavorful, let's put some more salsa on there. Let's put some more chili powder on there. There's so many things you can do. And I want you to know that, especially if you're trying out some new recipes, because, you know, some of my older recipes, people said, were a little bland. Some of my later recipes, some people said, had too many spices. <laughs> I, you can't win all the time, but it doesn't matter if I lightly spice or overly spice. You can moderate those yourself in recipes. If you feel like, you know, these things have been a little too spicy, just cut it back, taste it, and then move forward. Or if you feel like these recipes are usually a little low in seasonings, start where it is, and you can always add more. You can use... you. First start would be, if you don't taste it at all, to double it. But you know, we should all have food that we want to eat. And that's very important to me. Um, okay. Ah, okay. Julie says, Sprouts makes an oil-free corn tortilla with a little flour in it so it doesn't crack. And I'm trying to see if I can try to add a little bit of gluten back in. I'm not supposed to have gluten. I'm not celiac, but I, my joints swell up some. So also this week, when I feel like I haven't done anything and then I talk to you or someone else, I'm like, no, I did stuff. Because I literally milled organic spelt berries into flour and made a baguette. <laughs> that was what I did one whole day. Um, so if that starts working... I might try and make some of my own as well, because I do think the flour really helps. And I think, I think it's also okay to go, I'm feeling too lazy to roll up a bunch of stuff. Like I love tamales, I love pupusas. I make them a lot of the time. They're not super hard, but you have to, you have, to have extra tablespoon of energy that day just to kind of do it and keep repeating it. Or who knows, maybe I'll hang out with you guys one day and make a bunch, right? Bring a friend over. You could make pupusas or tamales together and split up everything. And Caroline, can I, you can message me on Instagram. I do not check Instagram as often. So if it's urgent, it's much better if you email me. You can also ask questions in the heartbeat group and usually I get to those very fast the past three weeks. I just caught up on. Um, yeah, I love La Tortilla Factory. And so, and I can tell you, I love a flour tortilla, but they do have oil in them. So, and I did get, Chef AJ told me about this and Julia, I don't know if you guys have this or not, but you probably do these, it's Me Rancho, thin, credible tortillas. They're really, really thin. And so I'm not a great tortilla maker, although I make some of my own. And as my friend Sandra Guterres, who is like a Latin American food expert, I use this to make myself feel better. She goes, you just make more South American tortillas, <laughs> which means mine are really thick. <laughs> but these thin ones, I've been cutting them and air frying them in the Breville for about three minutes. And they make the crispiest tortillas, and they're so thin and yummy. Um, Real says Cheryl was wonderful. I know Cheryl is awesome. Justine, I did not know I was going to go live today either. I was thinking about it, and then I was like, I'm supposed to do something at 2, and I was going to make lunch, and I'm like, why not hang out with my friends? Hey, Mona, it's awesome to see you. Oh, Carlene, my email is just Kathy Hester, K-A-T-H-Y-H-E-S-T-E-R at Gmail. No one believes it, but it truly, even my fancy emails get routed to that account. So that's my real email. Okay, so down below, ah, your picture's back. There's the Apple. I love that picture too. So that's why I was sad it was gone. All right, so I gotta get cooking. <laughs> so, all right, the Kung Pao, and I'll, sh I'll show you a picture. And again, you can get this whole recipe over on healthyslowcooking.com. Look up Kung Pao, you know. Um, oh, can I spell the name of those tortillas? 
M-I space Mi Rancho, R-A-N-C-H-O. Thin Credibles, like thin Incredibles smushed together. No, I can't spell that. Um, and then Mona said, I wanted so bad to reach and hug Cheryl. Well, and you know, today is Cheryl's first day off of insulin, too, because Dr. McDougal told her to stop it yesterday. So it's very, it's a very interesting time, and, and Cheryl's doing really well. Those of you who are like, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I didn't see any other videos. Um, Cheryl and I both did the McDougal 12-day program. Cheryl is off all her diabetes medicines. And in fact, she got off all but one after doing not even the maximum weight loss diet, just the regular McDougal diet, which is no oil, limit your avocados. You're, you're really not supposed to have avocados, nuts, and seeds unless you've reached your goal weight or you need to gain weight. Um, and tofu is to be used occasionally. We're gonna use it today. We haven't really used it a lot. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, Mona says those are the best tortillas. I had never heard about them and I we can't get them where I am. I literally ordered two cases of them to put in the freezer so that we can kind of have maybe one a week or one every other week or to, to give to guests because I, I served it with my oat queso that I make in the blender. So it's like you can get that on healthyslowcooking.com as well. It's just like rolled oats, water, organic cornstarch, and some spices, salt or salt substitute. And it's really good. It's really good. I'm feeling the moisture. I feel like I'm getting a facial, making dinner, and talking to my friends. This must be the best day ever. Um, okay, so you guys are awesome. I'm not going to talk about being on Chef AJ anymore so I can make some dinner because I have to cut things up. All right, so we're going to make Kung Pao. And so in this recipe, the way it's written, I try to always make it so it's open to interpretation. A lot of people make very strict recipes and I want to be the queen of options. So the main thing could be seitan, which is not on the McDougal diet because it's a very um, intensive, everything's processed. You put something in your food processor, it's processed. So there's a difference between processed foods and highly processed foods. And seitan is going closer to that. Um, you can do chickpeas, we could do cauliflower florets, and in the slow cooker, cauliflower florets can get a little bit hanky, so I think fresh works better in this than frozen, but you can use it. What I would say is maybe just do it on high, near dinner time, but that's up to you. Uh, but it does work, and I'm gonna, and I say our pressed tofu, so I always use this extra firm tofu, right? And why do I use that? Because I'm lazy. So it does cost more, but in this one pound, there's maybe two teaspoons of water. When we've got another one that's a pound, there's a lot of water in there and water inside the tofu. The only difference between it and regular firm tofu is that it's just thicker. Sometimes it says, like here it says super firm. Sometimes it will say high protein. They haven't added anything to it. It's just more protein because there's less water and more soy in it. Okay, so on the maximum weight loss of McDougal, you can't have any soy, but you could put chickpeas in here, you could put cauliflower, um, you could put just a bunch of different vegetables. We're gonna kind of play with this already. So um, the other things that I'm gonna change a little bit, so if you're on a salt-free diet, you can't really use soy sauce or coconut aminos. If you're on a lower salt diet instead of soy sauce, use coconut aminos. If you're on a no salt diet, what I would do is add a little extra water and then add some California balsamic teriyaki sauce. Uh, it's Well, not sauce, teriyaki balsamic, which is really heavy ginger garlic. So you can decide. I would add it before serving too. 
Um, Mona, I had to order it on the Mi Rancho site too, and they came really quickly. They came from California to North Carolina in like four or five days. It was pretty awesome. Okay, also no, uh, ah, Justine says, I like that brand of tofu too, but I find it doesn't soak up the flavor of marinades, and it doesn't. Super firm tofu to me is not what, something I'm gonna put in a marinade and leave over there. It's more of something I'm either gonna have a sauce, a thick sauce coating it. I like to just cut this up. If I was doing this as a stir fry regular, I would cut it up, put it in the air fryer for about 10 minutes, let it get that a little bit of a thickened skin, which gives you just a slight mouthfeel like you get from fried tofu without adding any oil to it. Um, but if you want something that's going to soak everything up, it's good to press that firm tofu, get all the water out, then put it in a marinade, and then it soaks it all back in. So I do agree with you there for sure. Okay, so I'm going to, um, if you guys have some questions, I'm going to cut up some stuff to put in here. And oh, I guess I should tell you one more thing before we do this. This is what happens when you just decide to make dinner. So this is one, my new-ish new slow cooker. I've had it for a while, and these are like the 360 stainless steel pans, which are really heavy duty. I think they're kind of equivalent of scan pans, and they have like this lid vapor seals and helps does some really good stuff. Um, and it has, actually, let's see if we can see it here a little better. The base is a little bit different. This is a quite an expensive item. So I'm not saying you have to have it, but if you've been looking everywhere for one that doesn't have ceramic, it's great. Also, all of these pans can go on the stove. So I have a two quart, a four quart, and a six quart of these. And instead of just having like warm, low and high, it's got one, two, three, four. Four cooks oftentimes from now till... Um, until dinner. So it can cook things, you know, like in four hours or less. This one uses a lot of extra water sometimes, so I watch it. I cook my oatmeal between one and two for overnight. And it's, it's just a little, a little thing like that. Now, I don't know if you guys have slow cookers or not. If you don't and you're on a super budget, what I would suggest is that um, you go to the thrift store. There's always an old slow cooker. Now, again, I'm going to get some, you're going to see me run around a lot today. Um, also, this might be good for, for the things I'm cutting up. Don't get the really, really old ones like from the 70s, because they could have some questionable glazes and stuff. You know, the 70s was not a good time for toxic load <laughs> here, in the, here in the United States and possibly everywhere. Um, so <laughs> I leave that up to you. I used my mom's from the 70s for probably a decade or more. And when I wrote this book, I've had a lot of different slow cookers. At one point I had like 25 slow cookers because they're all a little different. And actually I think this pepper is better than I thought it was. Um, and what did I say? I'm dicing it. You know why I'm dicing it? Because Cheryl doesn't love peppers. Hey Karen, it is awesome to have you here. You are not late. We're just hanging out making dinner in the slow cooker. Now over here, you can't see it. I, I loved this one and they just stopped making it. This is a Hamilton Beach. And it had a button where you can make it for two quart, four quart, or six quart. Because that's, kind of that's kind of the issue, you know, is getting the right size. And then, it makes me mad. This is the second one that I really, really loved by Hamilton Beach that they were like, eh, we're okay. We don't need to make that anymore. Um, <laughs> so 
And what we're making is a, is a version, like you might make someday, of the Kung Pao if you didn't have everything available to you. This is like real life, real dinner. Maybe that should be something I do. Does that sound like a good show? <laughs> You decide after you see me run around because I haven't pulled out things for the sauce. Like, this is not a proper demo. Um, and the recipe for anybody watching right the second. So we want one bell pepper, cord, and dice. So I'm just going to pop that in there. It says five ounces of mushrooms. Hello, this will be five ounces of mushrooms for today if it's wearing a costume or not. This is one of those zip top bags. I'll let you see it from the top. And I love these in the stasher bags. Cause see how big the top is? It really holds together and doesn't bust open in the freezer. I just got some for Prime Day. And I know a lot of people worry about the mushrooms being slimy, but they're not slimy to me. But maybe someone out there is just going, ew, but they're fine. I think they're fine. We eat them like this all the time. Now, I guess this one is thawed a little bit. So yeah, it looks a little slimy. Um, but the water, if I was to saute these on a pan, it, the water just goes away. It cooks out just like any other mushroom water is gonna cook, cook out. I love having some already cut because mushrooms are kind of expensive. I got these at Costco really cheap. These are the Baby Bellas because they were actually cheaper than the white button mushrooms. Okay. Let's see if I can get that about there. Ah, and Justine says the only slow cooker setting I have is in the Ninja Pressure Cooker. Would that work? Since this is all vegetables, it would. So, and, and Mona said, can this be made in the Instant Pot? This one in particular can be made in the Instant Pot on the slow cooker setting. The timings will be a little wonky. What you never want to do, the two things you never want to do, use your slow cooker setting for on your Instant Pot. One, baked goods. Just don't even try it. It's hard enough to make them work in the slow cooker and the Instant Pot separately. Their Instant Pot baked good recipes start with one of those and modify it. The other thing is dry beans, right? It's very shocking, but I had someone who cooked, had soaked and cooked their dried beans for 12 hours and they still weren't done. But I don't think it was an age thing because I've heard this happen multiple times to other food bloggers. So, so yeah. Those are the two things you can't do. If you see it's a slow cooker recipe where you're putting in a can of beans or pre-cooked beans, things like that, you can do that on your slow cooker setting on your Instant Pot or Ninja Pressure Cooker. That would work just fine. Oh, and Sandra's also saying California Balsamic extended their July special. Ooh, I don't know about their special. Tell me more, what is the special? And where did, oh. I set my tofu back there and I'm going to get a little bowl and I'm going to show you how much liquid comes out. And someone else said tofu that's been, uh, Scylla. And sorry, I meant, <laughs> do you like my, it's Halloween already in my house because I am tired of summer. And oh my gosh, I got a new thing to put my rice in because they've got Halloween at the TJ Maxx. <laughs> I'm sorry for those of you who want summer to be longer. I'm not trying to make it shorter for you. But um, I was reading an article today, because I've been saying for the past two years, because since we moved into this house and there's literally windows all around and we have clear story windows that I don't get um, seasonal affective disorder in the winter anymore, but I feel like I get it now in the summer. And there was an article that said, hey, is summer the new sad season? So I know, and Mona says, I'm so funny, I know. 
I'm a geek, and I've got my, this is um, from Gideon's. The only thing we can have there is coffee, and if you're a McDougaller not doing coffee, maybe not. But they have the coolest shirts, it's Gideon's Bakehouse. But yeah, I always love my little Halloween shirts all year long. And so see, that's not that much water. Maybe it's three tablespoons. Maybe I lied to you by mistake. You can rinse it off or not. We are not right now. And um, usually what I do is I cut this part in about three pieces. And this is very personal. How big do you want your tofu to be? There is no right answer except for you make it the way you want it. Then usually I cut it in half and cut it in half again. And I'm probably going to freeze some of this Kung Pao. If I was just making it for us for dinner tonight, I probably would only use half of this. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it up. I may or may not use all of it. You're with me right at this decision making time. Isn't it so exciting? Not. Not at all, right? <laughs> You're like, paint dries faster than this is exciting. <laughs> So let's go ahead and put some. I'm also kind of looking at the veggies. We'll put that much in. You could also do like chickpeas and tofu. I'm saving this and what I'm probably gonna do when we get off um, of the live is I'm just gonna air fry it and just put, throw it in the fridge and then we can heat it up with our beans and our other things. Um, Apple says, I get sad in the summer too, seasonal affective disorder. It's just too hot. Like, today is beautiful. It's cloudy. It's 78 degrees. I'm really happy. I have the whole house open. There was a little rain, like, I love rain. Um, but I think what the two seasons are having in common a little bit is that you, you're trapped in the house by something that is not a choice of your own, and that's very hard. And you're saying one block tofu, you think I should put the whole tofu in there? Ooh, you get two free travel bottles with California balsamic, and I think if you put in the note Chef AJ, you always get that. I think that's what the deal is. And Kitty Mama says, I'm with you, Kathy. Summer's my least favorite season and fall is my favorite. I'm a Halloween bride, yay. Well, there's mixed feelings about people putting Halloween stuff up in the end of July and August. But what it's great for me because it gives me this great um, dopamine burst. Like we, we're like, let's go look at Halloween stuff. And sometimes we buy things, sometimes we don't. But they're all, there's not going to be any in October because they're already like doing Christmas stuff. So I think I'm just becoming accustomed to this. Um, okay, I don't think I've done it. Okay, so I'm gonna put all the tofu in because Real said so. Anybody else wanna make decisions <laughs> about my dinner? <laughs> I was thinking of putting some extra veggies in here anyhow. So let me see if I have some different ones. I told you I'm gonna be going around the kitchen a lot. Yes. So I got a couple of pre-made things and um, pre-chopped things. So I love having shredded carrots on hand because I can make single serving carrot cakes, put them on salads. It's just an easy way to get another veggie and Cheryl that she likes. And then I got these carrot coins. They're not in the recipe. Ooh. This is an opening. So we're going to do it anyhow. Why? Because it's my dinner. It is not Kathy's dinner of several years ago. It's my dinner. Oh, you get free sample bottles, not trial size bottles. Oh, thank you for that. All right. So I'm going to put a bunch of carrots in here because we love carrots. And that's something I didn't have to cut. You want to cut yours? I'm not going to stop you have it at it. But like also this means if I say Cheryl cook up some carrots. Right? She has some right there ready for her. Let's see. What else did I want to one an eight ounce can of water chestnuts that is turning into 
bamboo shoots because that's all I got. Um, oh, here we go. Order three, eight, eight and a half ounce or larger California balsamics and get a two, get two comma three ounce samples and two of the small sample. Ooh, yeah. I, also getting vinegar. So why is everybody so hot for balsamics? Ha, uh, if you watch Chef AJ at all or do anything like that, you know um, it's because it's a really great burst of flavor with no oil. And while it does have some calories, you have to use a lot to get to, to start having it help you not lose weight. But it's very flavorful. And in fact, even when we weren't on a strict no oil diet, and these are already cut for me. This is why I'm picking these two. And I'm just gonna drain. You could drain and rinse. Let's see, what's in here? There is no salt in here, so I'm not gonna even drain it. I mean, I'm not gonna rinse them. And Sandra says it's a real game changer. It keeps me compliant. And I think for those of you who maybe aren't following Chef AJ's diet or Dr. McDougall's diet or somebody else's diet, and you're like, stop with all the diets. And, and diet really is just another word for eating plan. I'm trying to gather some of my, my sauce ingredients that we're gonna make and wipe up my mess. And it's great just on salads, but also try a little bit of, even if you just have plain balsamic, on your spaghetti sauce, in a cheese sauce, you know, over a stew, um, winter soups, like winter squash soups, just like blossom with something like that. It's just so awesome. Kelly's here. Yay, Kelly. What else do I need? I need my bouillon cubes. I need some ginger and some garlic. And see, I tell you, I just keep my ginger in the fridge. My creamy pints keep getting stuck. Garlic, ginger, something else I needed. Garlic, ginger, bouillon. And I made a whole bunch of bouillon. This is only one bag of it. So you can get my bouillon cube recipe on plant-based Instant Pot or Healthy Slow Cooking, depending on how you want to cook it. Healthy Slow Cooking tells you how to make it and all the things. So, this is just, for those of you who aren't familiar with my bouillon, it's literally an onion, some carrots, some celery, cooked down with, I use some thyme, but if you go to healthyslowcooking.com, it gives you, you could use mushrooms, you could use this, that, different herbs. Um, and then I put nutritional yeast with it. And if you can't have nutritional yeast, then don't put it in. But I'm putting in two of these, and that'll give it some nice flavor. I'm gonna put these back in because it's warm enough without the AC. I don't want them melting. I also have some aquafaba cubes in there from something else I was making not that long ago. Oh, Kelly says she has some in her freezer. Um, when Cheryl was starting the program, she's like, we need to get, we need to get those cartons of broth. And I'm like, no, which is the only thing, it, is there something wrong with cartons of broth? No. And if that's what you like, I wholeheartedly support you using it. So I want you to hear me say that. Um, but bullion takes up less space. It's cheaper. And when you have an ice cube trays, you just make it like, I don't know, usually I make it every couple of months. Sometimes in the winter, I end up making it every month or making, if I forget to make a giant batch of it. Um, also downstairs, I have chili frozen. 
I have some beans frozen. Anytime there's a leftover that's one cup that we're not going to eat right then, I'm putting them into the um, super cubes. And if you need to see those, let me know because they're over there, but I can, I can show you if you're like, what are you talking about? You know, how do I store my soy pulp? I actually have some in the freezer and I put it in just a block because usually what I'm doing is just making something else with it. So what that something else right now is, is I make ricotta with it and it's great for ricotta. All right, three cloves of ginger. What does that mean? I don't know either, so put however much ginger you want. Probably, really, it's like for a teaspoon, is about three cloves of garlic. And let me let you guys see this, though it is just chopped up garlic. But let me tell you where it came from. Um, in a class I just did, and during the McDougal program, I roasted four heads of garlic. So this is basically almost eight heads of garlic, that third that you chop off. I just pulled those cloves out and chopped them up so they're ready to go. These could go in the freezer too. It's just I'm cooking a lot lately. And you know what? Looking at that and looking at the extra stuff I put in, I'm gonna put a little more in. Feeling, feeling crazy, garlic crazy. I know I'm gonna try and get the Okara recipe up but literally, I take the okara, I mix some nutritional yeast, onion powder, garlic powder, and a little bit, like a quarter teaspoon of lactic acid. You could use salt or salt substitute. So how much, because you're the amount of okara you get could be different depending, but I probably use a, between an eighth and a quarter cup and probably between a half teaspoon and a teaspoon of the other things. All right, so we need a tablespoon of grated ginger. This, and let's see if you can see it better over here. Sometimes this one will do it. Can you see kind of the frost on it? Yeah, you can see the frost on it. That's because it's right from my freezer. I just pop them in like this. So I'm gonna take a nice grater. And I'm gonna leave the skin on today because I feel lazy. Sometimes I sc scrape the skin off. Go to the other camera, thank you. Um, but when it's frozen, it grates really easily. And you can see the grating above on top of the ginger, uh, top of the garlic. Woo! It's trying to escape. You're gonna meet your Kung Pao fate, I tell you. Um, Let's see what else we got. Kitty Mommy loves super cubes. They are expensive, but they are super heavy duty. And I know when I did a demo on them last time, someone said, hey, do they stain? And I did freeze some spaghetti sauce. So when I went to Trader Joe's last, they did not have any oil-free pasta sauce. I don't know if that's a continuation or if it was just that day. You know how Trader Joe's can be. Let me get all the goodies. And when you're slow cooking, sometimes garlic and ginger and things like that will dull, but you can add some more in there. You just really can. Um, all right, so what are we looking at here? Doo -doo -doo. You could put some red pe pepper flakes in here, but I'm not going to. Let me get a, a real measuring cup. <laughs> I don't want to just guess on this right now. Although we can make the sauce in here, I think. This is another thing that's super cool. It's these OXO dressing containers and they have measurements. So a lot of times, I'll just do something in here. So we're looking at, let's see, what's the biggest measurement? And we've got water too. So let me bring my water over here. We have a reverse osmosis. So sometimes the water takes a while if I want a lot. So let's come in here. We want a quarter cup of soy sauce, our coconut aminos, our brags, and you could just use broth or water, extra water. 
if you don't want to use it. I am using tamari. Um, you can usually get some tamari that's both gluten-free and low so sodium sometimes. So I'm going to pour this in until it gets to be a quarter cup. And we could have shaken in the garlic and the ginger. And if I went to my freezer and I was like, wait, I'm out of garlic or wait, I'm out of ginger. Powders work beautifully. So for a tablespoon of fresh, I would use a teaspoon of ginger powder, something like that. And I'm finally going to finish this bottle and open up a big granddaddy bottle. One thing I've been doing is saving these uh, bottles and washing them. We have a bulk store now that is accepting them clean and people are using them to put more stuff in. And you know, it's probably not, it's not saving the entire world or anything, but it feels kind of nice to do that. Also, it makes me feel like someone who maybe doesn't have the money to spend to buy a jar, they can go here and fill up a jar. So that's kind of nice. Do I have any other liquid ingredients? No. I'm going to put just a little bit of red pepper flake. Don't tell Cheryl if I can find it. Sometimes, sometimes if I put black pepper in it, she knows. Maybe I don't have any. I thought I had some. See, this is real life. Everybody thinks that everybody goes into their kitchen and everything's cut up for them and they know where everything is all the time. But this is, this is real life cooking. You know, when you're like, I thought I had that. Do I have it? Some black peppercorns. I have tons of little Penzi's jars that aren't labeled, which is why you're like, why is she looking at all that stuff so hard? What is this? That's Japanese seven spice. It looks like red peppers. Okay, Cheryl, you win. Maybe Cheryl hid them. I'm, I'm going to say it's all her fault. What do you guys think about that? You're on Cheryl's side, aren't you? Um, and Kitty Mama had, or Mommy has um, one and two cup sizes. Let me, sh let me show you them real quick. I'm supposed to be on a, another Zoom call. <laughs> That's not, I'm supposed to be listening to another Zoom call <laughs> right now. But you guys are so much fun. I might have to watch the replay. Okay, so here are all mine. These are the big two cups. They even have a little ceramic thing that it fits. Where's the next size? These are the one cups. And with them being blocks, they fit really nice. <laughs> Mona says, I don't care for red pepper flakes. She votes for that. And this is, and they also have milliliters on one side and cups on the other. These are the half cups. These are the two tablespoon. I got the set. So that's why, and these are for cookies, so you can make cookie dough and just eat the cookie that you made instead of eating all the cookies you made. That may not be a you problem, that could be a me problem. But I also used all three of these, including the cookie ones, to put some extra bullion in. You know, don't let them tell you what to do. So I'm just gonna pour this stuff in. And then we're gonna pour in one and a half cups, let's see. I think this whole thing is one. And if I cook it on high on this one, I might need to add a little extra water. But this is what we're going for right now. Let's see if I missed anything. So the before serving ingredients, you're gonna take some of the juice that's from here, because the veggies, are going to make some juice too. Let me let you see this from overhead. And <laughs> Dee says I use red pe pepper flakes and everything. Yeah, I go back and forth. And so it's okay that the mushrooms are frozen, that this is frozen. I have some green collards that are shredded in the fridge. So before serving, I might put those in. I smell it, it smells yummy. Now, 
And like I said again, I want to be real clear about this. The ginger and the garlic flavors are going to dull with cooking. Okay, so we're just going to put this on and get it started. With this one, it doesn't have an off, so I don't plug it in until I'm ready for it to start cooking. And I'm going to put it at about a four. And then I'll tell you three and a half. I like putting it on the line between three and four. I am going to be here. I would, any slow cooker and any slow, any appliance that's new to you, make sure that you're at the house the first time you cook with it. Even if you got it so you can leave the house, because if something was defective with the product, you'll know. And danger will be averted. And that's pretty important. So we'll, and we'll see, maybe I'll see how I'm feeling. If I'm feeling super exciting, I will show you this later on. I did that a couple years ago. But so like before serving ingredients, that's cornstarch and you can get organic cornstarch. But if you're allergic like Marilyn is, you can use like arrowroot or tapioca. The starch, the sauces we get in Asian restaurants are thickened with cornstarch because this is not going to thicken on its own. Um, it's also calling for two tablespoons of sesame oil, which is a lot. I say omit to make oil free. If you want that sesame flavor on a whole food side of things, you could do one of two things. One, you could put some tahini in there or you could just sprinkle some toasted sesame seeds on this, the final product, depending on what you, is okay with your eating plan and what you're trying to do. Um, steamed rice for serving, or you could do noodles. You could put this over noodles if you wanted to. Now Kung Pao traditionally has chopped peanuts. So if you're okay with peanuts, you could put some on. If you're allergic, just leave them off. You could also air fry some chickpeas to give it a little crunch, I would not put it in the dish. I would only put it over the servings. And if you make them crunchy enough, you can actually kind of smush them or what is, what is the word I'm trying to think? Anybody got this word? Smash. You can smash them and then no, who would know if it's a peanut or not? If you didn't tell them that, oh, I didn't put peanuts in there, they won't know and they won't care. So any of the Asian food that I make in the slow cooker, and how do I decide what could be made here instead of stir fry? So of course, it can always be made the traditional way. But if I'm looking at like Mapo tofu, anything that has more thick, rich sauce to it and doesn't need super crisp vegetables. And actually, I'm trying to think, celery is usually in here, onion, and you could, and let's put some onion powder in it. And this is why we write cookbooks and then I encourage you to change things because I change things. I think Cheryl hates onion as far as like the texture of it, but she's not gonna mind the flavor in here. That's why I use onion powder a lot. And for those of you that are looking at things like processed food versus not processed food, which is a spectrum. Shocker, like everything in life, right? Do you want to leave the house or not? Spectrum, no, yes, sometimes there's in-betweens. Um, just see what, you, see what you think. What's your opinion on that, right? And, you, and it gets very controversial, but onion powder is literally onion that's sliced, dehydrated, and ground up in a spice grinder. Is it processed? Yes, because those all are processing things. When I cut something, I processed that red bell pepper to go in here. Those carrots were processed on machinery to get here. But that's very different than if I had a packet of Kung Pao sauce or Kung Pao powder to make into sauce. When you look at the ingredients, then you see things like uh, modified cornstarch. That's a highly processed thing. High fructose corn syrup, solids, highly processed. So that doesn't mean you don't get to call where your stopping point is, but unless you're just 
eating raw fruits and vegetables, it is somewhat processed. And that kind of processing doesn't have a negative impact on your health, whereas these ultra-processed and highly processed products do. Ooh, D made Kung Pao last week. Um, does it have a slightly sticky consistency? And I'm not sure what you're asking me about now, Mona. I'm sorry, can you, can you remind me? Uh, and Ashley says, hi, Kathy. I was thinking about the crispy chickpeas. Maybe you could toss them in PB2 liquid before making them crisp to give a peanut taste. That is a great idea. Let me, I've got, <laughs> I have some PB2 powder that they sent me to review a long time ago. And this one has peanut flour, coconut palm, sugar, and salt. So if you're, S, if you're SOFIS or SOS, this might not work, but you could also just get peanut flour. So make sure you check the ingredients. But that's a great idea, because in class I made a ranch seasoning, dry seasoning. We made real ranch dressing, and then we made ranch seasoning that we coated the chickpeas in to make ranch chickpeas, which was kind of cool. Oh, is it just thick? No, well, you know, Kung Pao, I think any of the sauces that go on stir fries tend to be fairly thick, depending on the restaurant you go to. Even one I, we used to go to that made all, all their, its own sar <laughs> that made all its own sauces from scratch. They were very thick, even like a sweet and sour one, but it was just from the cornstarch. And if you don't like thick sauces, you don't want to eat cornstarch, you could leave it out and just, just pour the juicier part over. But just I just want you to know that when you open this, it's not going to look like Chinese takeout. Like this, let me see if I can. You see this picture with the thicker drops? It's going to be thinner than that if you choose not to add the cornstarch. So... Do you guys have any questions, answers, concerns, requests? Because if not, I'm going to um, go on my other meeting. If I get a wild hare, I might make, I, was, I have some fairy tale eggplant, so I was thinking there's also a recipe in here for garlic eggplant, then I might make that too. Um, Mona says she likes her sauces thick, and I do as well, because it's some, it coats the rice, and one of the things that I do usually is I'll just make a big stir fry. And also, it's not compliant McDougal-wise, but there are a lot of gluten-free Asian sauces out there that often are pretty darn close. They're always gonna be high sodium, unless you find one that's not, but typically they're all gonna be higher sodium. So using a little bit less, oftentimes I'll just, I'll saute a bunch of vegetables while my tofu is in the air fryer. And then I put the sauce on and then I toss in the tofu and that works really good. Oh, you know, I like the Nutramel. Dee is asking me about the Nutramel. I milled some spelt berries because um, I'm trying to see if I can add in some gluten if it's milled. There's some bagels by... I forget who they're by, something mill, but they, they mill their own flour and make it, and it doesn't make me swell up the same way. So I'm, I'm doing some experiments to see if I can skirt, <laughs> skirt the swelling a little bit. But um, I like it a lot. So I don't have anything to compare it to either. The other thing that I have used to make flour-like things have been a dry... Um, the dry um, pitcher for the Vitamix, and that's just not gonna make it as fine. I, I was able to get quite a fine product, but it probably took five minutes to get about three cups of flour. So it is a little bit of a process. And I know they have bigger ones, and I don't know how fast they process. I have a friend who blogs who I think has one, so I'll ask her how it's going. Oh, thanks, Justine. It was a nice surprise for you guys to hang out with me while I was making my dinner. Hopefully, some of this, A, I just wanted to say hey. B, 
I wanted you to see that even though someone writes recipes for a living, it doesn't mean they're always organized. It doesn't mean everything flows perfectly and you don't have to substitute things. We could have also put in here, we could have put celery, we could have put winter squash, anything that's gonna be a long cooking vegetable. If I wanted to add, let's say some broccoli, I could put cauliflower in here now. If I wanted to put broccoli in, I do that about an hour to 30 minutes before I was gonna serve and turn it to high. You can cook this on low and, and from in the morning and then come home and have dinner. Okay, you guys, I'm gonna go to my meeting. Be kind to yourself today and at least say hi and try and be nice to somebody else, even if it's an animal. If that's all you can do, that kitty or puppy will be very, very happy. Okay, guys, have a magical rest of your day and I will talk to you